I have in my hand some prototype 3D prints. Now why is that special? Well, up till recently, these prints were all either in or on various guns. Now, why aren't they? Now first off, I want to address the elephant in the room, and uh, well, if you haven't figured it out, it's I've not been uploading videos recently, um, and I just want to say sorry for that, and to kind of explain, um, work and life has definitely got in the way, I've been very, very busy these last few months, and it's not that I didn't have the time, but when I did have the time, I didn't have the energy. So hopefully I'm coming out of this kind of lack of energy slump and should be able to make more videos for you guys. But anyway, let's dive on in. Oh, wait, no. So if you want to see those videos that I'm hopefully going to make in the future, don't forget to subscribe and drop a like and a comment down below. It does really help out and should help keep the channel going. Cool, I'm a bit rusty on this old uh, self-motion stuff. Right, so let's start off with these. These may look like pick rails to you. You'd be correct, they are. But these are very specific pick rails, and I like to call them my SA80 Tez rails. So I hear you cry, Ben, what the hell is Tez? Well, it's a term that the MOD used to define a set of A2 rifles. So if I grab my Thornycroft SA80 book here, and go to the quite chunky section on acronyms, and go to T, we find TEZ, or Theatre Entry Standard, an agreed battlefield configuration for the L85A2 rifles developed as a result of operational experience in the early 2000s. Now, I'll quickly pop up an image of what an actual TEZ rifle looks like. Bear in mind, early 2000s, so they switched out the handguard for the DD rail, um, and they put on the Surefire Flash Hider, and then they switched out the SUSAT, 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 for the cantilevered ACOG. Now, the reason I'm calling these TES rails, because they're not TES rifles, is because the modern day equivalent of the TES rifle, or the theatre entry standard rifle, is the A2 with the DD rail and the Picatinny sight rail with the LDS on top of it. Looks somewhat like this. Hence the TES rail, because if you're going frontline with an A2, this is what it's probably going to look like nowadays. The SUSATs are more reserved for rear line troops. That Technically not issued anymore, but they still are very much issued. But this is your frontline theatre entry standard of A2 rifle. So, I've got two types. One that fits ICS or WE, and one that fits Army Armament or G&G. &G. Here is my G&G. &G. Here, uh, here is the production version on it. As you can see, it's nice and solid. I can hold the rifle up by the sight through it. It is made using the same process as the EK3M kit, so it's it's nylon, um, but it is bolted directly to the rifle uh, and is very solid and gives you a nice mount. Exactly the same with the ICS and the WE and bolts directly to the rifle. So those are in production now and you guys can buy them if you want. They are £25 shipped in the UK, slightly more if you're overseas, but either way, drop me an email and we'll sort that out if you want one of those. So, moving on from that, let's go to the smaller items. We'll start with the smallest first, uh, which I'll pop out now, and I'll show you that. Like so. And to most of you, you'll be going, what the hell is that? But if you own a WeTech High Power, that is a lifesaver. Or in fact, these are lifesavers. Yes, these are my 3D printed uh, Wii High Power replacement valve knockers because the original Wii High Power valve knocker, that's a lot of words, is, uh, for want of a better word, a bit crap. It's cast from metal and they've decided to copy the real high power in a sense of if you load the mag with a hammer down you break it and it's a pain to get replacements of those so I've designed and now successfully got 3d printed uh, replacement valve knockers and the nice thing about them being made from nylon is in my testing at least if you load it with the hammer down you feel quite a lot of resistance and it won't lock in and you just end up bending this and yes it doesn't work straight away once you've racked it and put the mag in but all you have to do is drop the mag take the slide off fire the hammer off and then push down on it to bend it back into the right place and it all works and hey if it doesn't there's going to be three in a pack 
Uh, so you can just take the damaged one out and put one of the spare ones in. So something that didn't even cross my mind until someone asked it was, does it perform as well as the standard one? I can't comment because my standard one broke instantly. However, I can say with WE green gas and two eights in a room of about 15 degrees, um, it over 10 shots averaged about one joule and uh, saw only about 10 FPS fluctuation. So I would say it is perfectly usable for skirmishing, which is all good. Now those bags of three, so you get three in a bag, they are £10 shipped in the UK. Again, international shipping will cost a little bit more. Drop me an email, we'll sort that out. Or if you only really want one, that'll be £5 shipped. So, all in all, a nice cheap way of fixing your high power and turning it from paperweight into somewhat skirmishable pistol again. Now, on the topic of gas guns, we come on to the final bit that I have recently released, and that is the WeTech L85 Bolt Hold Open mod. Bit of a mouthful. But yes, WeTech did a lovely job of making, I say lovely, WeTech did a job of making the gas blowback L85, and it was really, really nice. And I apologise that my uh, dust cover is open, but A, a the spring has gone, and B, the... Uh, the actual catch that holds it up is gone because we did. But anyway, they've made a gas blowback L85 uh, and it is fun to shoot. But for some reason, they could not figure out how to make the bolt hold open work like a real L85. But it turned out all you needed to do was 3D print a part and put some blue tack in a certain place. And now, there we go. Bolt hold open works, bolt release works. Now, you can do your NSPs to your heart's content with the L85. It's all really good. So the kit comes with the 3D print and the grub screw you need to fit it all in place and that's 15 pounds shipped in the UK. Again, slightly more for international, but I am doing international shipping on those. And you can buy those right now. Wait, what's that? Oh. You could buy those right now if I hadn't sold out of them. But more are on the way, so if you want one, drop me a message and I'll get you added to the uh, pre-order for the next batch. So that is all the parts that I have been working on that are now in production. Obviously the bayonets are still available on the Quest. The ICS SA80 hop-ups are available. And uh, the EK3M kits are still available on request as well. On top of that, I have been doing some other developmental work. So this is early stage uh, production prototype of a 1x working suit sight. So hopefully, what if I do that? Maybe this will work. Oh look, you can see through it and maybe you can see me. Oh wow, wow. Yeah, um, suit sights are expensive. So if you've got a nice foul or SLR and you're wanting the look of a uh, marksman rifle I guess with the real suit suit sight it's going to cost you close to a grand to do that so my aim was we'll make a 1x red dot so it's still usable for skirmish but will be hopefully literally a tenth of the price of a real suit sight so still some work to do on that but that hopefully will be coming in the near future and hopefully more videos will be coming in the near future so yes, if you wanted to find out more information about everything that you can buy from me, head on over to EnglishKiwiAirsoft.co.uk. There is the English Kiwi Designs tab and there is a nice old list of everything I make. And for everything listed there, you can click on it and find out more information. And at the bottom of every page should be a way of getting through to my email to email me to order some of the items that I have available. So that was just a quick summary of what I've been doing these last few months while I haven't been uploading videos. I do have like 10 different videos that I've kind of started editing and then just haven't had the time to finish editing and then I've got sidetracked and distracted and then thought I'd edit something else and do something else. Those should hopefully be coming at some point. Hopefully now I've got my groove back a bit I can sit down and actually properly edit those. Um, and probably change the story of how it all works anyway, because I, me now has different ideas to me back then. So yeah, if that made any sense to you. <laughs> I'm hopefully back. Thank you all for being here and sticking around. Um, 
and not hating me for not uploading videos. Although I don't blame you if you do hate me for not uploading videos. But hopefully until next time, which shouldn't be too far away, stay safe and I'll see you all soon.